Okay, so I might have a problem with buying laptops, but I don't want to talk about it, so it's not really a problem. So this is the ThinkPad P51, a laptop that normally goes for about four to five hundred dollars as a quit. First, before I talk about anything, I'm going to start using this laptop as my daily driver for the next month or so and see how much upper body strength I get taking this to coffee shops. Now, this is a serious laptop for serious people. Mine came equipped with a quad-core Intel i7-7700HQ and an NVIDIA Quadro 1200M, along with about 8 pounds and 10 miles of bezels. And hey look, a numpad plus. Came with 16 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM and two M.2 SSDs. That's pretty cool. There is also the option for either a 2.5 inch hard drive or another SSD if you just really want to load up on that solid state storage. Along with up to 64 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM if you max out all your RAM slots. And either a 60 or 90 watt hour battery. And the best part is almost all of this is easily swappable. All you have to do is just take out a few screws in one panel. Even though it is easy to take apart, this thing has some serious build quality. Something I really would only expect from Lenovo at this point with my experience with other laptop brands. It's made of plastic, yeah, but it's extremely durable plastic on the inside with a solid, I believe, magnesium frame on the inside. It feels significantly stronger than the T-Series ThinkPads, and it is really damn rigid just all around. There's seriously like zero flex on this thing anywhere. You could drop this thing on a brick, and it would break the damn brick. The keyboard is also, I mean, it's fantastic. It has no flex, and honestly, I think it's better than the T470S, and way better than the keyboard in my T495. The thing that is not better than my other ThinkPads, though, is the trackpad. It does look deceptively small compared to the frame, but it's actually still pretty sizable for a laptop of this time, something I try to explain frequently to myself. So while it isn't that small compared to a 14-inch laptop's trackpad, I really wish they didn't waste the space on the bottom of the trackpad for actual buttons to click, since there's already buttons on top, while also removing the option to click down on the trackpad itself. I know everyone in the ThinkPad cult will tell me it's for real working hard men who are too strong and burly for a trackpad that clicks, but somehow still use the fingerprint scanner that comes standard with these. But for my weak middle-class latte drinking hands, I would really prefer to at least be able to click the trackpad even if they kept the extra buttons on the bottom. Options, Lenovo, give me options. All right, so with that small rant over, using the P51 is actually pretty standard for ThinkPads. The screen actually works though, and it's really bright. Mine came with a 1080p 60 hertz, nice matte display that, I mean, it works. <laughs> The problem I've had with other ThinkPads I've used is the screens were way too dim. That is not the case with this one. It is perfect. The speakers are all right. They're actually loud enough. They're just not really studio quality, but they're not horrible, which I mean, is normally fine on a laptop. Other than that, we have some seriously major portage going on here. Just on the back, we've got two USB-A's, one USB-C, Ethernet, a Lenovo charging port. And then on the sides, we, <laughs> we have two more USB-A ports, a Thunderbolt, a full-size SD card reader, and an express card slot. I'm not really sure how useful that's been for the past decade, but all right. Let me know in the comments what you use yours for. But this thing is seriously packing some heat, both in the specs, ports, and, well, <laughs> heat. So let's talk performance. So I got this laptop mainly to test the things that I do because I do them, as I do, starting with Premiere. So for my first test, I took my 5D2 review and removed most of the After Effects animation because it was nearly tripling my render time and just crashing. I just didn't have the patience for that. I don't, whatever. Exporting in 4K led to a render time of nearly 14 minutes, with 1080p dramatically reducing that time by almost a third. The main problem with using this laptop for 4K editing, though, is unless you're transcoding your video ahead of time or using proxies, the 4 gigabytes of VRAM that come with this GPU really just isn't enough to edit H.264 footage right out of your camera, at least for my A7S2. I even had issues with Premiere just failing to export due to lack of VRAM when using hardware encoding. This is a similar issue I had on my computer. I actually had to upgrade to a GPU with 11 gigabytes of VRAM because transcoding's for nerds, I guess. I use proxies, don't hate me. With proxies though, this laptop is really great for 4K editing. It's really smooth and just really good to use, especially with the big bright screen. I would, however, upgrade the RAM to 32 gigabytes if I was going to keep using it for editing though because After Effects just loves to chew through RAM and I noticed I was pretty quickly maxing out my 16 gigabytes. If you're planning on using this for 1080p editing though, this will happily power through it with little to no complaints at all. 1080p just works. 
Same with Lightroom and Photoshop, both performed pretty well, but frankly, after a certain point, Lightroom just never gets any faster for me, which is great and all, but I did want to actually show some solid numbers for you guys this time. So let's look at some artificial benchmarks. First up, we got Cinebench R23. The P51 managed to score 4,036, which is about 1,500 more than my T495 with the Ryzen 7 3700U and about 5,000 less than the Ryzen 7 1800X in my desktop PC, which in my opinion is pretty respectable for a five-year-old laptop. Next up, we got Blender BMW because my car has been broken for about six months and I hate life. The P51 managed to churn through Blender BMW in about 10 minutes there, which was about 10 minutes slower than my PC did it in. Performance-wise, frankly, this thing is pretty solid. With how fast modern CPUs have been advancing though, the P51 actually ended up scoring way closer to my T495 than I really would have thought. Granted, after the T495 testing, I wasn't able to have kids anymore, but after the amount of heat the ancient quad-core i7 the P51 has put into the environment, it won't be habitable for them soon anyways, so I guess that's a win. Overall, performance-wise, the P51 did pretty well, getting similar performance to the 4790 I was actually using to edit my videos for a long time. Something less similar to my 4790, though, was how the CPU would quickly become pinned at 95 to 96 degrees whenever I did artificial testing that was stressing the whole laptop. I was actually extremely disappointed with how quiet the fans stayed and how hot the laptop itself got. The fans were loud, but honestly, I, I expected this to turn into a jet engine like a server to keep the CPU cool because it's supposed to be a workstation laptop. I even went through the effort of taking the entire laptop apart, reaching the point where I had to take apart the screen, giving up, and then doing it all over again at 11 o'clock at night on a work night, and replacing the thermal paste both on the CPU and the GPU. Huh, weird, I wonder what this piece was for. Oh, even after all of that though, the CPU still would throttle, but it did put up a Cinebench score of 4357 after the repaste, so I guess that's something. I should also add that most of the tests I did besides the initial Cinebench and Blender BMW test were done after the repaste. The battery life also wasn't insanely impressive. I could play somewhat lighter games like Wind Waker in bed for two or so hours without problem, not that you'd ever want to do that, but even with light usage I never really got more than four hours of battery life out of this laptop. Battery life frankly is not a priority for this laptop though. The priority is performance. Now. I know this laptop was never designed to be used for gaming, that's why it came with a Quadro and not a regular GeForce card. But with how, frankly, horrible the build quality is for a lot of consumer laptops, especially from a few years ago when this came out, this is probably going to be a laptop a lot of people consider for a somewhat portable gaming machine, due to the exceptional build quality and the reputation for business class ThinkPads to last basically forever. I mean, I still see people online constantly still rocking like 20 year old ThinkPads just for fun I guess, I don't know. So I took to some light gaming. So at first I tested emulation because mostly that's what I play honestly. And the basics will obviously work. NES, SNES, Game Boy, whatever. Dolphin also worked really well. I'd argue flawlessly, even when cranking up the internal resolution on all of the games I tested. PCSX2 worked so well I ended up playing through almost all of Jack 2 and 3 and Precursor Legacy again. <laughs> It did start to struggle in a few areas of each game, especially Jack 3, but for the most part, fully playable for like the 30 people that bought a PS2 instead of the millions that bought a GameCube. For Minecraft, I'm not really sure if anyone plays Minecraft anymore, but for 1.19 with complimentary shaders set to media, we can get a pretty playable experience at 10 chunks hitting around 40 to 50 FPS. And for Halo MCC, this one was surprising for me. Halo Reach on regular settings at 1080p actually ran like a champ, consistently hitting high 90s or low 100 FPS. Halo 4 ran pretty similarly, but was less fun. And just for the fun of it, I tried GTA 5, and wow, fully playable 1080p medium settings. This one surprised me so much, I actually decided to try Metro Last Light Redux because I wanted to play it, and making laptop reviews takes a long time, okay? Anyways, Last Light ran surprisingly well too, with an average of 40-ish FPS with medium settings in the included benchmark. It ran so well, I actually decided to try Exodus 2, and on low settings, I would consider it mostly playable, but it's pretty jittery and it doesn't look amazing to me. The fact that you could even play this game though if you wanted to on a sub $500 laptop is pretty amazing to me though. Which sure, you could put together a PC for $500 that would run it way better, but just let me have my fun. And real fast, I wanted to touch on the last benefit of this laptop. Like I mentioned in the T470S review, a lot of companies buy laptops like these in bulk, allowing you to sometimes find incredible deals where these were just 
not heavily discounted, but 10 to 25% off where they'd normally be online. For this P51, I was actually bidding on a P50, but the guy had issues with the P50 and told me he'd ship out a P51 if he couldn't get the P50 in time due to having many P-series ThinkPads on hand. So I let him know my son needed this laptop for school soon, that son being me due to me being a child and that school being YouTube, since I learned more from YouTube as a kid anyways. Since he had no P50s available, he offered to ship me the P51 with two-day shipping just for the trouble. And happily, my son's school said that would work if it was shipped next day. My point is, if you hunt enough, you can and will find good deals on ThinkPads. Even if you don't have your seller mess up like mine and get crazy lucky, good deals can still be found. And if the P50 and P51 is a little out of your budget, I did make a video on the T470S if you want something that could potentially be a little bit cheaper. I actually did end up selling the T470S I used for that video for a little over $100, so that could be a great consideration if you have less of a need for a dedicated GPU and have a pretty tight budget. So, how did I like using the P51 for a month? Well, I can tell you I did the final editing for the script on my normal laptop once all my testing was done. Not to say I didn't like the P51, but it's a really heavy, pretty, loud and hot laptop that chews through battery life like whatever the equivalent to a kid in a candy store is for Gen Z. I don't know, social media, whatever. Either way, this isn't going to replace T-series ThinkPads for me. For me, just sitting in bed, working on writing scripts or researching videos, it's just not supposed to replace them. Especially with the latest Ryzen generation right around the corner. But the main problem is with my T495, if I really want to edit video off of it, I can just create proxies and edit the video almost as well as the P51. Plus with modern game streaming, I'm really not gonna be missing out on too much when it comes to performance as long as I can run Parsec and I'm near my PC. But if I didn't have a good PC and a server to handle all my storage and rendering, this would be a seriously solid laptop if you need some gamer powerhouse and wanna get some work done that requires a decent CPU. If I made good life choices and went to college, the weight and lack of battery life would be trade-offs I'd be willing to make just to have one laptop that can do almost anything for less than $500. So thank you guys for watching. Remember to do the whole liking and subscribing if you feel like it. Also, because I'm curious, let me know what else you wanna see in future laptop videos. I'm not planning on doing a ton of them, but I am planning on doing more just because I really like it. So thank you guys for watching.